in developing courses uh, was working or whether we had to adjust on, on what are the elements that are still needed some help. And also, um, the information is helping us to have a, a different type of conversation. As you uh, might be aware, whenever you try to present um, some uh, trends or present the research, what is the research saying about online learning? And um, we see some, uh, some indicators that are common nationwide and on how online learning is, is happening, access to technology, and um, usually the conversation happens, well, our reality is different. Our school is different. We have specific um, elements that are not the same as what the research is saying. So being able to have uh, these results that will confirm what the trends are, are um, saying and what the realities are saying, so then it allows us to have a different type of conversation. Uh, being able to identify that even though we have a different reality, uh, we see the same trends. Access to technology was one of the uh, biggest elements. We um, had that um, kind of perception that uh, students don't have access to technology and that's why we cannot push too much, we cannot give these assignments, and we get, we get these results and consistent results. Um, over 90% of our students said that they have access to technology, that that was not a problem. So now having this, this important information will allow us to have a different type of conversation and then focusing on deeper levels of how we can improve then um, the development of and the quality of online courses. El término assessment eh, es un término muy amplio. Eh, cuando hablamos de assessment, no solamente hablamos de un examen, de una prueba. Se supone que en el campo de la enseñanza, ese profesor esté haciendo avalúo constantemente. Okay, assessment is, is a wide concept. It goes, just, it goes beyond just testing. There's a lot of the strategies involved here. En el caso de nosotros, cuando nos enfocamos en retención, el assessment es muy importante. Porque, como les mencioné antes, ese estudiante tiene que estar motivado, pero ese estudiante también tiene que conocer las tecnologías que va a utilizar para ser exitoso en un curso en línea. Okay, so, retention is, is important, and assessment is important to retention. And it's important to take into consideration the technologies that the student has in order to deal with retention. Nosotros comenzamos con un taller de inducción para los estudiantes que están en línea y ese taller de inducción que se le ofrece en línea eh, haciendo que ellos pasen por la experiencia que van a tener en un curso real tiene instrumentos, tiene cuestionarios, tenemos actividades que estamos evaluando constantemente. So the students go through an induction process where the different strategies, instructional strategies and assessments are provided to the students so the student would have a some sort of a background in terms of what's going to be going on in the future. Inclusive en ese mismo taller de inducción tenemos cuestionarios para identificar si el estudiante tiene pobres destrezas de estudio, si el estudiante tiene buen manejo de las tecnologías con el propósito de referirlos al consejero académico o al especialista en tecnología que lo pueda ayudar a ser exitoso. At an induction workshop, uh, they try to identify um, any type of deficiency that the student may have, uh, in academic deficiencies, studies, habits, etc., and also any type of deficiencies that he would um, be uh, observed in terms of use of technology. And that way, they will be referred to someone who will be able to help us. Respecto a los cursos, dentro de lo que es el assessment, es importante destacar las rubricas no entregar un pedir un trabajo de ejecución sin que el estudiante sepa exactamente qué es lo que usted le va a medir. Regresando nuevamente al punto de vista de la retención, el evaluar si ese taller de inducción fue efectivo para el estudiante o no, es sumamente importante. Well, again, in terms of retention, it's very important that the assessment process go on continuously so we can know if the student is, is advancing or not. 
esto adicional a lo que conocemos como los foros, eh, la, los wikis o las asignaciones, eh, todo nos lleva a tomar unas decisiones. Por consiguiente, todas las actividades de avalúo, tanto las observaciones del profesor como las que tenemos a nivel de estadística, son importantes para tomar decisiones. Okay, I'm I'm noticing in in the first two themes uh, something that's that's striking, um, which is the element of flexibility, which is interesting. Uh, flexibility in instructional design to be able to be sensitive to the student, which is something I'm noticing as common between the three elements. Uh, it's not a question of having a uh, a, a steady or, or a fixed instructional design without m measuring how, how effective it is or not and, and making the adaptions necessary. Um, but also in, in terms of the assessment, it's to be wide enough to be able to be just in terms of the observations of the students. So I think that that's, it's an important element to, to introduce flexibility in instructional design and flexibility in terms of the assessment strategies, uh, which is good to, to think about in, in terms of uh, the success that they've had in their programs. Uh, let's continue, this is interesting. And the third one is on retention. Uh, how are you dealing with retention in MOOCs, for example? Okay. Um, retention is typically in the, the traditional higher education model a very important measure of um, success. In MOOCs, um, if, if we view retention in MOOCs the same way we view retention in, in traditional higher education, it could be dismaying because retention rates in MOOCs are, uh, or attrition rates in MOOCs are between 80, 90%. That means that if you um, are able to keep 10% of your um, original and, uh, student population, you would be lucky. Um, in 2013, the median was this, between six and seven percent of students that, that, that we were able to retain um, or in, in MOOCs. With our particular MOOC, we had a, an 18 percent uh, retention rate, which was well above the, the, the median. Um, yet, retention per se is not the, the right way to measure success in MOOCs um, because uh, completion per se is not what you want in a MOOC. Um, George Siemens, who, um, who's one of the MOOC pioneers, in, in fact he offered the first MOOC back in 2008, he mentions that completion um, is, is, not, is not the right way to go about it. For example, if you think of a library, he, he says, you don't complete a library. You simply go to a library, you find what you want, um, satisfy that learning need, and exit that, that learning process um, when, when you see fit. That's the same case applies to MOOCs. Um, in MOOCs, you can think of it as a collection of resources that um, uh, the, the, the institution facilitates to the student, and the student can come and go um, as they uh, see or satisfy their needs. So retention may not be uh, the right way to, to, to look at it, at, at success of MOOC, of the success of a MOOC. Instead, you could do like uh, Carlos was suggesting, uh, you could uh, poll the audience or survey to see if the MOOC was useful, if it satisfied their learning needs, if they found it valuable, if they developed uh, the skills and knowledge that they desired. You can, you can get all of that data by um, uh, talking directly with the students. In our case, we had um, um, over 90% satisfaction rate, um, almost 98% um, utility value uh, with our MOOC, which was largely um, dependent on that instructional design, the flexibility, the assessment techniques. And that is key uh, to be able to have um, some qualitative um, information. We know it's more work to be able to um, to analyze that data, but um, it's important. Oftentimes, the reasons why students uh, don't complete courses are not because of the academic 
side are for other reasons, personal reasons that we might not know, and, uh, might not know uh, at the end of the of the course, uh, and that just becomes another statistic, right? So that's part of the calculation, and that's how the we calculate retention. But uh, we might not know deeper what would be the um, the issue or. Perhaps if there was a way of identifying an early intervention will help to those students. And I think institutions are working more in that sense, how we can identify uh, early, uh, what are the factors that are um, impacting negatively for students to not complete. Um, that's why we see all those early warning systems and all those different systems and institutions that are adopted to be able to react earlier. Um, in terms of, um, the retention, we all know that online learning has lower retention in in general. Um, and I just want to um, piggyback on what uh, the keynote from yesterday, John said, uh, about the importance of having um, how the faculty member is teaching the course. That is, it's important to focus on how the content is being delivered. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you know that we have our favorites, right? So we know that uh, if we have the same subject that is being offered and there is five or six faculty members, the students will choose a favorite faculty member and it's the same subject. But it's because of uh, those specific elements that this faculty member has that is more appealing for students to go and take the course. So um, it's important to identify why students are want to choose that. When, um, and then being able to get those best practices or get those examples from, from faculty members to be able to have a, a different set of conversation. And um, I think it is key to create um, communities of practice. Uh, it's been very successful for us to uh, create a community of practice for technology adoption at, at the Foster's Community College. Before we used to have uh, bringing new technologies, we want faculty to test any new technology that happens, and if we had one or two faculty, like the usual suspects, like we say, uh, the, they was like, yeah, I want to try this, uh, no problem, but they, we didn't have enough faculty to um, to want him to try uh, new technologies or just take risks. And we started to create, to nurture this community of practice, and um, now when we send out a call for 